Hey everyone, next Sunday we're kicking off our new series called The Vow. If your marriage is strong, it will be strengthened. If it's weak or broken, this series will give you the tools to start to repair and rebuild. Maybe you're single or divorced and the idea of marriage is the last thing on your mind. But what I promise is as we look at how a husband and wife are called to love one another, you'll have a stronger picture of how God loves you. So no matter who you are or where you're at, join us next Sunday for The Vow. Good morning, Grove Church. My name is Ava and I wanna welcome you this morning. We're so thankful you decided to spend your Sunday here with us. At the Grove Church, it's so important to us that we connect with you. That's why inside of the program you received, you'll find a connection card. We want you to fill that out so we know how we can be praying for you, celebrating with you and connecting with you. You can also scan the QR code and fill the card out right on your phone. If it's your first time visiting with us, we also have a gift for you. So please, as you drop off your connection card on the way out, make sure to stop by the Welcome Center and grab that free gift. Now here's a few announcements. Our spring equipping courses are launching very soon. These courses help to equip us in areas like our marriage, finances, spiritual growth, and so much more. We've got our Purpose Driven Life course starting next Sunday, February 4th. This course goes through the practical steps to help you discover and live out your purpose. It's gonna be meeting over in Equipping Room A during our 8 a.m. service. You can find course resources and a full schedule of our other courses over at thegrovechurchfl.org slash equip. At the Grove Church, we love celebrating baptisms. We never get tired of seeing life change and baptism is the outward expression of someone's inward decision to follow Jesus. I wonder if that's your next step. If you're interested in baptism or you think that it might be your turn, then I want you to scan the QR code below. See, we believe that baptism is a great opportunity for the church to celebrate what God is doing, saving people. And to be honest, it's why we do everything that we do. It's why we serve, it's why we give our first and best, it's why we plant churches, it's why we reach others, it's why we serve our community, it's why we cultivate faith, is to see others fall in love with Jesus. If it's your turn to take that step of baptism, scan this QR code and we can't wait to celebrate it with you. Grove Church, we can't thank you enough for your continued financial support. It's because of your generosity that we're able to reach our community, serve others, and share the love of Jesus. We have a few simple and secure ways to give. You can give online, on our website, or on the Grove Church app. Or you can fill out the envelope in your program and drop it off on one of the giving boxes on the way out. Now let's continue in our service. Good morning. You guys ever been backpacking before? Show me anybody, raise your hand, backpacking. Those online, those in the chapel. Oh, you've been backpacking, perfect. Hey, so if you've been backpacking, you know kind of like the whole point behind this is you take everything you can, you put it on your back and you hit the trail and you want to be gone for days on days on days. If you've never done that and you don't like to walk, probably not your sport, okay? Uh, stick to Amazon and shopping on Amazon. That's a good sport for you. But uh, if you like it, there's something about just being able to venture off, right? A little hard to put a full-size pizza in this pack, but it is doable with a Ziploc. So uh, just a little, that's a little secret for the trail for those of us that like it. But um, I, there was this one trip a few years ago, actually before I had kids, so probably about 18 years ago. My brother Brian and I were in San Rafael Wilderness in Southern California. It's gorgeous. And we had a weekend trip, uh, our, two, our wife's. They went to Universal for the weekend, just the two of them, and Brian and I went to the woods. And we were gonna do a 42-mile loop in three days. 
um, a little adventurous, a little crazy. Uh, but we get one day in, and as we're walking, and we're walking, it's so exciting just to see different landscape. At that time, we were living in South Carolina, and Southern California looks a lot different than South Carolina trails that I'm used to hiking, and uh, going up and down, up and down, valley after valley. But before long, like one bottle became empty. It's hot. So you reach back and you pull out your other bottle. And before long, it's empty. And if you've ever backpacked, one of the best ways to do food is dehydrated food. So uh, you kind of prepare as you go your meals. But one thing that I carry uh, is more bottles uh, to try to carry as much water as I can, depending on the weight you want. Um, carry as much as you can. But another thing that doesn't take up a lot of weight, but actually is really good, is my purifier. My purifier is one of those things that uh, really small, collapsible, but I can take water from anywhere. The problem with this trail was we were almost one full day in. My bottles were empty, and we could find water nowhere. Have you ever ran out of water? <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> you ever been, have you ever ran out of water where, like, you were in need of something and you didn't have what you needed? Well, I want to tell you a story today in John chapter 2 where they don't run out of water, but they run out of wine. Now that I got some of your attention. Uh, let's look at John chapter 2, starting in verse 1. So if you have a Bible, go ahead and turn there now. John chapter 2, verse 1 says, On the third day a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Five words. Do whatever he tells you. This, this story is the first of miracles for Jesus. It's the first recorded miracle that Jesus performs um, in his earthly ministry. Uh, it's also very important that we understand the concept here, that they're invited to a wedding. It's not Jesus' wedding. It's not Mary's wedding. Um, but Jesus and his disciples were gathered there. Jesus' family was gathered there. And there'd be something really, really important about whoever's wedding this is, whoever's hosting this wedding, if they run out of anything how negative it will reflect on the family. They'll be like the laughing stock of town if they run out, especially like if you've been to a wedding and you run out of garlic bread, no one really cares. You go to the wedding and they kind of run out of pasta, you're like, ah, I had my fair share anyways. But you go to a wedding and they run out of wine, you cut that family off from all other social gatherings. Like what a disgrace, right? And Mary knows the magnitude of this crime. She knows the significance behind, if they run out of wine, what this family will endure. So she just looks to Jesus and says, hey, son, they ran out of wine. And then Jesus responds with the most biblical answer you've ever seen. And now here's the deal. Men, how many of you guys right now want to take your next step in following Jesus? Men, anybody? Men, you want to just say, hey, I want to be more like Christ than I was yesterday. I want to be more like I am today. So I dare you, I dare you right now to look at your mom or your wife and just say, woman. Oh, y'all are scared. You don't want to be like Jesus. I thought that's the whole purpose of church is that we come to be more like Jesus. Like when your wife asks you something later today, say, woman, why do you include me? All right. <clears throat> I prefer do that behind like tempered glass. Okay. Here's the real truth. Kids in the room. I don't ever want to hear you call your mom woman. All right. Truth be told, don't do what Jesus did in this one story. But he says, woman, why, why do you call me into this? And then she doesn't even go back to why Jesus questions her. All she says is five words. Do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. This miracle performed. Why is this miracle the first one recorded? Why is it even there? Like, what's the significance from water to wine? I believe God wants to teach us something great here. That when we run out, whatever it is that you've ran out of, when we run out, there's a person we can go to. And his name's Jesus. And in this series, we're wrapping up this series today, it's called God Can. And God can do immeasurably more than we've ever asked, dreamt, or imagined. God can do so much more in your life if we would just ask him. God can. You know, these miracles are recorded. John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31 says that the miracles are recorded, or they're performed, so that 
so that you would believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. There's so many more miracles that Jesus did in his lifespan. So many more miracles that Jesus and the disciples got to witness with their own eyes. So many that there's not enough books on the earth to write down all of these miracles. Yet the ones that are recorded right here in the book of John, they're so that you and I would believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Church, this morning, I believe God wants to do a miracle in each of us. I believe God can do a miracle in every single one of us that's willing to let God work. I do. I believe that. But it's so that he can receive much glory in his name. So whatever you're going through today, place of hopelessness, God can provide hope. A a place of wreck, where you've wrecked relationships or you've wrecked your life or you've wrecked the the circumstances, situation around you, God can provide healing. If it's a sickness or disease in your body, I truly 100% believe God can heal your body. Financial ruin, relationship, disrepair, God can. God can do a measure more than ever we've ever asked, dreamt, or imagined. So what must we do? We've ran out of water. What? What must we do? First thing, if you have a program, I believe, is our step today and every day in becoming more like Jesus is simply this. Believe he can. Believe he can. You want to experience a miracle in your life? Believe God can. Mary, she knew who Jesus was. She knew from the time that the the seed from God was planted in her womb, that the Messiah would come, that the baby, sweet baby born unto her would be the savior of the world. She knew. Why is it at this first wedding or why is it at this wedding in, in Cana of Galilee? Why here is where she calls out? Jesus, they ran out. Do whatever he tells you. Five simple words. She believed he could. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Mary believed Jesus could fix the problem. Mary knew that he had the power to take care of the solution. On this backpacking story in California, when Brian and I got into this 42-mile loop, uh, we start charging the first day. We were going to do like 10 to 15 miles that first day. And as we got near our first campsite on the map and we realized there was no water, Uh, We charged through the first campsite. We kind of sat down, had a little snack, um, put our headlamps on, and then walked well into the night because we were desperate for water. We knew that once we actually cooked our meal um, of dehydrated ramen noodle or whatever meal we brought that night, if you ever had those, they're horrible, um, but on the trail they taste so good. Uh, Whatever we knew, we knew that our bottle was going to be empty. So we saved just a tad bit for the morning. Uh, So we could have a drink, maybe a coffee or a hot liquid on a cool morning. Uh, But when we got going that day, uh, we were well into the next day. We're we're probably 20-something miles into this loop, still no water. And I knew in that moment uh, the only thing we had was to pray. You you ever been there Where, where you run out of something? You're like so desperate. You're like, God, please. God, please. I know I'm mom's favorite. Can I be your favorite, right? Like, don't tell my brother that, by the way, but uh, I'm definitely the favorite. So, but like, God, please, like, God, give me what I need. Like, please, God, please. And I got to this place where I started dry heaving. I don't know if you ever dry heaved from being so dehydrated. I was so weak. Uh, my palms were sweaty. My knees were weak. There was vomit on my backpack already. Like, uh, uh, I was hurting so, some of you are like, what song is that? You know, it's like, I don't know, Shazam it. But, uh. I was so bad off. I was so hurting. I just needed water so bad. And here came our savior, I thought, a guy on horseback. And he was coming towards us. And he tells us, hey, you guys are backpacking. When are y'all planning to get out? And we tell him what day we're going to get out. He said, hey, you guys better hurry because mule season starts tomorrow. And there's going to be people out here hunting. And I just said, praise God, they're going to have water. Like they'll bring water, you know. And the guy's like, oh, if you keep going, there's water up ahead. He said, it's not far. And he like points to this mountain range. And he said, on top of that range, there's water. Back up, we go. Throwing up, passing out, like crying, literally crying um, from dehydration. Both of us, my brother uh, served me well. He took all the heavy things out of my backpack, left me with like the sleeping bags, right? And we're walking, trying to find water. We can't find it. But here's what happened. 
we stopped and we prayed. I knew God could. I, I knew God could provide. And in my heart, I knew God would provide. But see, that's where the tension builds for us today. I think a lot of us in this room are without water. Maybe it's a spiritual significance that it's not water we're without of because we can just turn the tap on, but we're without hope. We're without peace. We're without joy. We're without healing. And we know God can. We just don't know if God will. And we find ourselves sitting in this place of like, I know God can. I just don't know if God will. I know God has the ability to make water to wine. I know God has the ability to provide water <clears throat> in the well up from the earth. I just don't know if God will, not for me or not in this situation. I just want to encourage you again, remind you, the reason why these scriptures are here, the reason why these miracles are written down is so that we would believe, that we would believe Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah sent to save. And, and through Jesus and Jesus alone, you and I can find true life, eternal life, everlasting life. And if you want to see that miracle, the first thing you must do is believe. Believe he can. And then in our belief, it's not just that we say we believe. Because remember, Jesus says himself that even the demons believe. They shudder at the name of Jesus. They believe it too, but their life doesn't reflect their belief. See, you and I say we believe something. Our belief must show that we do something about it. For me, when I was out of water and the cowboy on the horse told me there was water up ahead, my belief made my feet keep walking. My belief put action to my feet, and my feet kept walking, though I wanted to die. Literally thought I was going to. Right? 25, 26 miles in, no water. About 30 hours in. That's a lot of miles in Southern California in 30 hours to try to get to this place of water. But I believe he could. The difference in that phrase of I believe he could and I believe he would rest on you. Because when you want to get to the place where you believe he would, you do this. You have faith beyond your sight. James chapter 2, the half-brother of Jesus, he says this in James 2, 18, but someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You know what James is saying? I'm thirsty. I'm out of water. So I'm going to keep walking. Because I believe the water is just ahead. I can't see it. I don't even know what mountain range he pointed to, but I know he pointed that way, and I'm walking. Some of us in our, in our life, in our situation, we can't see outside of today. You don't need to. Faith doesn't illuminate the path. Faith encourages the heart to take the next step. You don't have to see what's in front of you to have faith. Matter of fact, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith is, I believe he can, so I'm going to walk it out. I believe he can, so what I'm going to do is do whatever he says. Mary had faith that Jesus could perform the miracle. She didn't know how he was going to do it. That, that part of the story hasn't happened yet. She just knows that he can. So she looks to the servants who aren't even her servants, and she just says, hey, do whatever he says. They didn't respond, woman. Why you include me? No. You don't say that to your friend's mom. Don't end out well, right? No. Do whatever he says. They look back to Jesus. Because Mary believes that he could. And when you believe that he can, you also have to take action for yourself. Second thing I want you to see this morning is if you believe God can, take action on what he says. Take action on what he says. Uh, John chapter 2, verse 6. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kinds used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus says to the servants, fill the jars with water so they're filled to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. And they did so. Six large jars of water, 20 to 30 gallons each. So before us right now, if you're uh, in the auditorium, you see this God can in front of you. That's a 55-gallon drum. So if we did some quick math here, and there was 25 to 30 gallons per, and there were six of them, we only need three of these. But three of these large drums, if you're over in the chapel, there's a drum up in front of you uh, that you're going to participate in a minute. But in here, 
uh, these drums, if we stuck, uh, stood them up on stage, three of them, and we filled them completely with water, that's the amount of water that these servants went and got. And Jesus just says, hey, fill them up. And what do they do? They fill them to the brim, like not kind of full, not like halfway full, not like when you order a large coffee and you get like this much and then foam to the top, right? No, no, no. It's filled to the top, to the brim. And when they fill them to the brim, Jesus says, now, take some out and take it to the master of the banquet. He told the same guys that put the water in the jars to take some out and take it to the master of the banquet. Just do whatever he says. For me, the cowboy on the, cow, on the horse, he said, hey, water's that way. Oh, he just did what he said. Believing he would tell the truth. Believing that God would provide. Believing in my heart that God would, not could, but would provide. Brian and I back and forth having conversations about what we're going to do when we get to the source of water. Right? And I was like, I'm going to cannonball in it. I'm swimming. I'm bathing. I'm going to drink while I do all of that. But I'm, I'm getting in the water. And Brian's like, me too, man. I can't wait. Believe that he can and take action. We didn't stop walking. We walked well into the night. We finally laid down. We were so exhausted, we didn't even set up camp. We just laid down on top of this grassy hill, and we went to sleep. We woke up at first sun, and we got up, and we started walking. And I'll never forget, my brother said, Barry, look at that. And I had one of those moments like where I thought I was in Hollywood in a movie, and I looked up, and there was like a swimming pool and a hot tub and a pizza buffet. Because, I mean, if you're going to be in heaven, you might as well have all of heaven, right? And, like, everything was picture perfect. Just kidding, I saw none of that. But what I saw down at the bottom of this valley, miles in front of us, but we could see it from afar, my brother said, you know what that is? I said, no. He said, those are cattails, Barry. Those are cattails. And cattails only grow in one thing. And I said, a cat's butt. <laughs> he said, you're an idiot. Cattails grow in water and only in water. And I just remember the Forrest Gump moment in my legs. I said, I was running. Like, I, I, I went from dying to running to thinking, change my mind on the cannonball, but I'm at least going to get something to drink. And like, we got down to the bottom of this ravine and we started yanking out cattails. And my brother said, dig a hole. And we dug the hole as wide and as deep as we could get. And I remember just soil, ripping soil back, pulling bushes out. And little did I know, like, water started to build in this pocket. Bottles aside. <laughs> face in the hole, just drinking, just drinking, because I knew God could, and I knew God would. There was this moment in my life where, like, I believed he could do it, and I knew he would do it. Again, that's where some of us are today. Like, we know God can, but for some reason God won't, and you're just stuck there. Are you taking the action to do whatever he tells you to do? There's a healing that needs to take place in your body, and you believe that God can, but are you taking the steps that God would? There's a situation or relationship in your life where you believe God can, but do you believe God would? Let me ask you this. Are you willing to fill the empty jars with water? Knowing that you ran out, like are you willing to put something that you know is not the right ingredient in? And then take it to the master of the banquet? Are you, are you willing to work for the water? Are you willing to fill it to the brim? Are you willing to put your pride on the line and dip it out, take it to him and say, hey, taste this, knowing that it's water for you? Like, are you willing to keep on hiking with the 40 pounds on your back without water? Now a full day in, are you willing to keep walking because you believe that in front of you God will? See, believing God can is not enough. You have to put the action into your step and literally walk it out in your life. I've heard it said like this. Uh, there's an acronym that says FAR. And FAR stands for faith plus action equals results. Faith plus action equals results. And I think in our life, this is the story in John 2 that we see. We see the faith of Mary and the faith of the servants. We see the action of the men filling the jars. And then we see the results that only God can do. Look with me again at John chapter 2. This time picking up in verse 8. They draw some out. They take it to the master of the banquet. 
and the master of the banquet tastes the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants had drawn the water new. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much wine to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. When we have faith to believe that God can, we put action into our faith that God will. We experience the miracles or we experience the results. Another way to say that is we go far. We go far. And more than anything in your life, you want to experience the result of God's miracle in your life. You hear what the master of the banquet said? Everyone brings out the choice wine first. Of course, you give the very best first. And then once everyone's had a little too much, you bring out the cheap stuff. Who would do that? (laughs) Who would do that? The master says, but you, you know what you've done? You've saved the very, very best for last. This isn't a shock. It's not a surprise. Because Jesus got involved. In Grove Church, I don't know if you know this or not, but when God gives, God only gives his first and best. It's all God knows how to do. When humanity sinned, when we fell in the garden, and sin brought death and destruction, all God could do was give his very first and his very best. He gave his one and only son, Jesus. Jesus comes and lives a sinless life into humanity. Gave his very best and died the worst of the worst ways. That's all he knows how to do is give his very best. I I read this verse this past week and it it stood out to me. This is exactly the point I was trying to make right here. It's Philippians 4, 9, 19. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. You're without water? You've ran out of wine? Do you have faith that God can? Are you willing to act on that faith and turn it into action? And if you are, I believe the results that you desire are coming soon. The result that you desire can happen not because of who you are, because of what you do, but all because of the riches in Christ Jesus. That he be glorified, that he be honored. But this, again, is one of those places with unresolved tension in our life. I believe God can, but for whatever reason, I just believe God won't. If that's where you find yourself, like, I believe God can, I just don't believe God will, not in my life, not for me. Then I want to ask yourself, what's your ask? What are you in need of? Like, the provision that you lack, what is it? Is it just to better your own life? Or is it to further the kingdom of God? Is it for the glory of Christ that others would come to believe and to know that he's the son of God, the savior of the world? Or is it just so you have a little more luxury, a little more comfort? But when we don't experience the result that we desire, we just repeat. See, far, faith, action, results, it's a cycle. And when you don't experience the result that you're looking for, you just keep going. You have faith to believe you can. You act upon that faith or that belief, and it results in a miracle of God. And it looks a lot like the recycle symbol to me. Kind of over and over and over again that I just have faith, leads to my action because I believe it to be true. And then when I believe it to be true, my actions lived out equals results. And if I don't get to my results, I just go back to faith. And I believe it to be true. And then my actions lead to results. And if that don't happen, listen to what I do. I believe God, I faith God, I wait. I believe God, I faith God, and I wait. And if it doesn't happen, I just keep going, believing God, faithing God, and waiting. The results are not up to me. The results are only up to and through God himself. But the action and the belief is 100% on me. God wants to do a miracle in your life. God wants to do the miraculous in your situation. Do you believe that he can? Will you personally take action on the belief? And then by God's grace, I pray that we experience the result. But again, 
Just because we ask for it doesn't mean we receive it. If your ask is a selfish ask and it's only for you and your glory, why does God want anything to do with that if it brings his son no glory? It's kind of like this. Uh, I started to pray and ask God for more money because money was tight. Bills were unpaid. Tension in the marriage was, was uh, starting to build. We've all been there. So you just pray and you ask God, hey, God, just more money would meet my needs. <clears throat> and you begin to pray. And you say, God, I'm going to pray and trust that you're going to provide more money. But I'm going to seek you every day with all I have. And then little by little, what you realize is as you pray and try to spend time in the word and try to spend time in the Lord, he doesn't provide more money. But you know what he does? He shifts your heart. And he takes the object of money in your life and he replaces it with generosity. And he says, it's the same concept, Barry. Same concept. It still revolves around dollars. It's just not for your happiness. And little by little, what you realize is money wasn't your issue. It was your placement of where you put it. And God changes your whole heart. And now all of a sudden you say, hey, I've gotten to give and be generous more than I've ever had in my life. Money doesn't lead me anymore, but I actually get to lead my money. And it's one of those things where you ask God to do something, but in asking him, the action that he puts into your life and you start to live it out is you go from money hungry to generous. Your prayer started out on a selfish level. It started out with something saying, hey God, I need this. I'm out of water on the trail. I'm dying of thirst. Maybe your prayer is I'm at a wedding and they've ran dry. God, we need more wine. Maybe for you, it's, God, I'm sick. And I have a disease that's killing me. And God, more than anything, I want life. I want life more abundantly that John 10, 10 promises. And you're asking for a healing. Maybe it's a financial provision. You say, God, I'm so sick and tired of barely making it. I, I just, I want to follow you and know you more. Will you provide in this area? It's hope. Maybe you're hopeless and you want more than anything. Say, God, provide hope in my despair. It's relational wreckage. God, provide for me restitution. If you're broken and you say, God, can you provide in me a new life and a new creation? You know, the only thing God promises in Scripture that we he gives more and more and more of is a deeper dependency on him. So I just say, go back to those same analogies and just look back. If it's a money issue for you, you don't need more money. You want more dependency on Christ. So thank him for the lack and the gaps in your finances because it's in those times that you have to depend on him. If it's a sickness in a place where you're crawling out, crying out, asking for healing, like thank God for the health that you do have. Change that way we look at it and say, hey, we've, we've ran out and we're hopeless. But in the same time, God, we know you can. And I believe you will. So I'm going to act on that. Expecting and desiring the results that you've promised. You know, the greatest miracle in all the scriptures, John 20, 30, and 31, say so that, that we would believe that he is the son of God, the Messiah, the Savior sent to save the world. The greatest miracle that we could ever ask for is that from us, as sinners born into sin could experience an all-knowing, all-loving God. And in that, we could be a new creation. Though we've wrecked our ship, we've ruined our way, we've failed against God deliberately and consciously. Yet God sends his one and only son to die in our place, to pay for all of our wrongs and all of our sin and all of our shame. And then we can ask him to be the savior of our life. And willingly, he steps into that place. A brutal death on the cross so that you and I can have a deeper, intimate relationship with Jesus. That's the greatest miracle that you could ever fathom or imagine. That God loves even you. And he loves you so much that he would give his one and only son so that you can have life and life eternal. So here's what we're going to do. The worship team is going to lead us in a new song, and I've already heard it twice today, and it's incredible. So I want some of you guys just to sit where you are and just listen to these lyrics. And then when you're ready, 
This is the last week of God can. It's been a powerful thing for our church to see this movement. But today's that last day that you're going to sit in that spot. You're going to ask God for whatever you're asking provision for. Hope, restoration, peace, salvation, new creation. You're going to write it on the card. And then when you're ready, when you're ready, I believe this. We're going to go into a season or just a moment where we're going to look as ourselves only as sons or daughters. That we're, we're his kids. And he's the father. And we're going to write out to the father exactly what we are we're asking for. We're going to put on the God can. We're going to pray and trust the Lord that us getting up and putting it in the can is us taking our first steps of action. And we're going to ask him to do his, his part. The miraculous results. And then I'm going to come back after that song. And I'm going to close out the service together. So stay right where we are. But sometime in this song, get up, take those God cards, fill them out, put them in this can. If you don't have one right now, there's some up front on the tables here. If the rest of you, you have them in your program. Uh, I'm going to pray for us. They're going to lead us in a song. We're going to take our first action. Jesus, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for loving us, for dying in our place. So Jesus, right now, whatever it is that we're in need of, whatever it is that we're asking for, not on our behalf, but on your behalf, that you would receive much glory. God, we know you can. Now help us to believe we know you would. Provide that for us today. You were the man in the desert, desert. And you've been a fountain on the days my faith was dry. And you'll be the lily in the valley, valley. And why would I doubt you are the God that still provides? And you were the ram for every eye. my shepherd when I left the ninety-nine. You'll be beside me in the fire, fire. So why would I doubt when you always show up just in time? The miracle workers work in a miracle now. The miracle workers work in a miracle now. The miracle workers work in a miracle now. Cause you never let 
says uh, he can do immeasurably more, Ephesians 3.20. More than we ever ask, more than we ever imagine. I want to encourage us, just because we ask for it doesn't mean God will. The ask is up to us to decide, do we want the glory or are we pointing all the glory towards him? But whatever you lack, whatever you're in need of, whatever you hurt for, whatever you long for, God can. God can. I believe that he will. When all the glory points to him. All the glory points to him. The results are up to God. The belief and the action are up to us. So church this morning, if you want to experience what it means to have new life or a new creation, we'd love to pray with you and talk to you right now. There'll be some of our team up front. Love to pray for that and pray with you. If you're praying through something and you want us as a staff or a family uh, to pray along with you, uh, and you put it on the card, we're going to pray with those cards this week. But if you want to speak to someone or pray with someone this morning, please come forward. And uh, we'll pray with you. The rest of you go in God's grace. Have a great week, and we'll see you right back uh, next Sunday for the vow. Thank you so much for joining us today at the Grove Church Online. We hope that service and that message was incredibly encouraging to you. Hey, I don't know where you are spiritually, but let me tell you what we believe. That God loves you and has a plan for your life. But because We've gone our own way. We live in brokenness. But the good news is, is that Jesus came and lived the life we couldn't and died the death we should have and rose from the dead, proving there's a way out of brokenness and towards God's plan for our life. If you're interested in learning more about how to have a relationship with Jesus, I'd encourage you to visit the link below. We'd love to connect with you and would love to help you take your next step in your relationship with God.